Hello, welcome to my little kitchen. Today we're gonna make something that my mother used to make with the leftover rice. So if I had some risotto for lunch and uh, I didn't eat it all, it would reappear in a different shape. So it's very important to make sure that the rice is used as soon as possible because you mustn't keep rice too long. And if it is kept, it's refrigerated. So what I'm gonna do is like the roast that we had, which is a, a kind of a pancake. I have no name for it. So if you want to suggest one, please do. So what I got is leftover rice. I got this one with uh, some sweet corn. I got some uh, peppers, sweet peppers, the ever-present onion, one egg, grated cheese, and then spices. I got some turmeric, salt, pepper, and oil, which is the standard sort of uh, presence. So what I do is prepare the raw ingredients, which is the onion with the peppers, and mix them in nicely in the uh, hot oil. So as I cut, I put them into the oil. So I take it up to a, a fairly high temperature, which is maximum. And of course, this we know very well, but today we don't dice it as fine. We want it the same size as uh, the sweet corn, as we did for the salad uh, lorette. So the slices across, I do it much slower and much faster with the holding hand, the finger walk, so as to give more space between each slice. And cut them in slightly larger dice. And you can use the, the root as well in this case. Remember the name for this dice is called Macedoine. It's a tiny bit sort of smaller, so it could be called a brunoise. So hot oil, and in I go. And as I cut, I cook. Mix them in nicely, and flatten them out on the bottom of the pan. And I do the same with the peppers, starting off always with the green, which is the unripe one. Moving on to the next stage of ripeness, which is the red. And then the very ripe one would be the yellow. And that's depending on how they stand in the sunshine. Sometimes you have, you have peppers with the three colors in one pepper because they have been standing with one side to the sunshine and the other one to the shade. So green in first. We just want to sweat them, not to cook them through. Got a bit of crunch in my rice. Rice, as I said, my mother used to have risotto, which is a, a short grain rice, which absorbs more stock or flavor. And of course it would be a saffron one. That's why I use turmeric today, sort of to mimic it. Of course the flavor is not the same at all and it would have been finished with parmesan cheese inside, but I got cheddar instead. And I'm using basmati rice instead. So they are, again, colorful. They would have appealed to my uh, young infant eyes. And the shape too, reminding me of a cake, would have made it more appetizing to me as well. So put a bit of flavor into it. Pepper, freshly ground. Some salt, not too much because there'll be some cheese there. And just sweat it nicely. If you've got the rice shaped pan, this tossing is quite easy to do. You use the slope of the pan to sort of uh, circulate it. Ground. But Electric, as I keep on saying, is not as good as gas. It loses the contact and the heat at the same time. So next I prepare the mix, which is a whole egg, which I mix with a fork. We do the turmeric. Not too much because, it's, as I say, it's a different flavor than the saffron. It's 
she always makes me nicely tiny bit of salt and today I might have to do it in two videos because uh, the cooking of the pancake is a bit slower and I won't be able to fit it in my video I leave the pepper out then I mix in the cheese And that's the binding for the rice because I say it's a long grain rice instead of a short grain it's got less stickiness to it so I finish with the chopping board so I put it away and off I go mixing the whole lot into the rice you can add Extra ingredients for yourself, depends if you like it sort of a spicy, you can put a bit of chili in it, some of the Indian spices, so if you have a, say a, a pillow rice, you can go Indian, but Italian will be a risotto for us. In England we have a lot of choices of culture, and that's just about getting soft, and in it goes. Cut the pan back. While I mix it in, the oil heats up and I do the same as what we did with the Rösti, which is the Swiss potato cake, about 50-50 with butter until it becomes sort of a nut brown. Don't worry about the bits of uh, the peppers, they're all mixed in with the, the rest of the rice. And mix in my rice with everything I got and you can see the color is coming up more or less like saffron and this could be served quite easily into sort of wedges with a fried egg on top or even some uh, meat preparation with some sauce which I might do next time with a say that the pork medallions in uh, lemon sauce which goes very well with it or if you remember those uh, salt in boca, it goes together with that too. So make sure it's really mixed well, even press down a bit, so to make it stick together. You get a bit of the starch working. And the egg should be everywhere, so when it's set, it keeps the cake from falling apart. And I used to have this when I was little, and I used to like the crunchy bits on the edge of the pancake. So the butter is coming out to a, a nut brown color, frothing up nicely. And here it goes. A fairly slow heat, so it has a chance to cook through and crispen up nicely. So I'll just pat it down, make sure it's got an even sort of thickness all round and the grains of rice are sticking together by the pressure I'm applying. And it's slowly already frying. The edges, as I say, tend to be crisp when it's cooked, but it's less heat on the edges. So I just trim it down nicely and that will go on for about a couple of minutes checking the edges of the time to go golden color so I stop the video here and see you in a couple of minutes right here I am it's starting to crispen up on the outside so I'll turn it round the same as we done with the roast you put a plate that fits the shape on it there's a tiny bit small and might break up and then make sure you cover your wrist because you might get some of the fat on your hand. Put the cloth onto the plate and just turn it around. And you should have a nice golden color. At this stage you reheat the pan and put a tiny bit of butter, not too much because it's quite rich in fat already, just to prime the pan so that it doesn't stick when I put in the second side. Let's 
some profit. When it's all melted, I just gently shift my rice pancake into the pan. Very gently because it doesn't stick together the same as potato. And now uh, you repeat the operation. So I'll see you again about, it took longer than two minutes because I got gas and we had got electric. But I'll see, show you the finished produce in just uh, two or three minutes. See you soon. And here it is, ready for service. So enough. This is the best presentation side, the first one that was fried. So the other side is going to be put against the plate I serve it in. Same trick. Make sure you cover your wrist where you're likely to burn yourself badly. Put it on top and just decisively turn it over. And you can see, oh, it's not too bad either this side. But certainly, yeah, I'll leave this side, it's good. So I just slide it onto the plate. And here it is. More or less like an Italian bubble and squeak, is it? It's got no name, so if you like to suggest one, do, and we'll name it, and we we'll see what we can do next week. Bye-bye, everybody. Happy cooking.